One last biblical sign I want to talk about uh, concerning these end times. This comes from Daniel. Daniel chapter 12, verse 4. And part of learning of the prophecy is I was saying about going back and forth in the Old Testament. Uh, this was concerning Daniel's uh, 70th week dream. And uh, it says, But you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Well, you don't have to be a biblical scholar, you don't have to be smart or anything else to realize and accept the fact of how knowledge has increased from biblical times uh, in biblical scripture up until today. Now, there's not a whole lot changed uh, technologically wise from biblical days into the 20th century. Everybody got along by horse, uh, horses, and, and then along comes a car. You know, Henry Ford creates the car. The Wright brothers take flight, and now we have an airplane. Soon after that, we have jets. Everything's moving along. It's like, wow, we've come a long way. So you can obviously see now where we can understand that during the tribulation, after the church has been removed, that is the rapture, that the two witnesses, which come back and are uh, killed in the street, and I, I believe it's going to be Enoch and Elijah, and and the Bible says, and the whole world will see them laying in the street for three days. Well, past times, here again, preachers thought that this would be a supernatural act, somehow that God was going to pull this off, so everybody worldwide could see them. But television, satellites, I mean, we can watch a war going on in the Middle East, watch our planes bomb people as it's happening. So we can understand now how everybody will be able to see this. And then this innovation called a computer was created. And then the cell phones. And now things are going so fast technological wise that a cell phone I buy today, uh, as a matter of fact I use the uh, Samsung Galaxy S4. Well, I thought, well, I'm going to upgrade to the S5. Now, within the next couple of weeks, the S6 is going to come out. And my phone, when I got it, less than a year ago, was the hottest thing out on the market. And you have your iPhones. You know, they had the 3, 4, 5, now the 6 with the iPhones. So you understand how knowledge has increased. We, we, we've moving along so fast we buy something today in a couple of weeks it's outdated computers the same way hardly anybody has desktops anymore they've gone to the tablets the laptops and the memory holds more and more and more but the size is smaller 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 you remember back people that were my age when dick tracy was a cartoon he used to talk to his watch if you remember that on the phone and, and that was really cool well they have that now Amazing, isn't it? And running to and fro. Not many people traveled a lot back, even the 50s, 60s, 70s. There wasn't near as much traffic and hustle and bustle as there is today. We moved from the city to the country to escape that. Um, any of you that live in a, in a big city know what rush hour traffic is like. And our Dallas and Fort Worth area here is just like any other large city. You know, Atlanta, Los Angeles, Nashville, New York, any, any large city. People are constantly on the go. And here in Texas, it doesn't stop. It's 24 hours a day. So you think, well, I'm going to travel at night when there's a whole lot less traffic. Yes, there's less traffic, but there's still traffic. People running to and fro, to and fro. And what was written thousands of years ago in the Bible by Daniel says exactly that. People will be running to and fro and knowledge will be increased. So it doesn't take a theologian. It doesn't take a doctor of divinity. It doesn't take 
a pastor, a Sunday school teacher, anybody who reads this will understand. It's like, I understand. Wow, this really is the last days. So I've given you these biblical last signs that everybody's wanted to talk about. Well, how do we know? How do we know? And Jesus said, when all these things come to pass, know that the time is short. This is it. Now I'm going to give you a couple of things right quick. I'm not going to dwell into them a whole lot uh, that are not from the Bible, but they, well, just let me explain. Back in, the, back in the 12th century, there was a very devout rabbi who lived by the name of uh, Judah ben Samuel, also known as Judah the Pious. And he often got called the light of Israel. Now remember, he was back in the 1200, and he made some prophecies. And these prophecies he sealed. I'm sure they didn't have an envelope like we have today, but they were sealed. And he requested that they not be open until after his death. So, upon his death, they were open. And he stated that Israel would have ten jubilees left as these things start to happen. Now, if you don't know... Uh, and according with the, in the book of uh, Leviticus, a jubilee is 50 years. It's 49, and as the next year turns over, it becomes a jubilee, the 50th year. So one jubile is 50 years. And he made a prediction uh, that Israel would be conquered and ruled for 400 years, by the Ottoman Turks, and that's what happens. That uh, in the 12th century, uh, Jerusalem was ran, I guess you would say, under control of the the Mamluks. And in 1517, the Ottoman Turks conquered uh, the Mamluks and began rule of, of Israel. And he said, uh, Rabbi Samuel stated that that reign by the Turks would be for eight jubils. Okay, eight jubils. That's 400 years. 50 times eight is four. Okay? And to the T, that's what happened. And he made this prediction 300 years before it did happen. It was in the 12th century, and this took place in 1517. And he said when that first took place, Israel would have ten jubilees left. So, he said the next jubilee would be one jubilee and it would be that Israel would be no man's land. And that's exactly what happened. From 1917 until 1967. So the end of that 400 years exactly was the eight jubiles. It ended in 1917. 1917 to 1967 was a jubil, jubilee, and that was 50 years. And this is true. During this time, no one really owned Israel, okay? It, it was like a no-man's land, okay? Even though they became its own country in 1948, it was still considered a no-man's land. And yet the river... The Jordan is separated. You got Israel on one side and Jerusalem, Jerusalem on the other side. Once they reunited in 1967, that's when the formation of the actual country was. Okay, they were no longer a barren land, and the Jew, and the Jewish people were coming back and coming back, and they had reunited. So that was the ninth jubil, and said that the tenth jubil would be the Messianic times. So, that's from 1967, and that jubilee would end in 2017. You say, well, what did he say would happen at the end of the jubil, jubilee, at the, uh, after those ten? He said it was then that the Jews would see their Messiah. 
Interesting, yes? So, in about 1200, in about the year 1200, he made this prediction that Jerusalem would have 10, ju 10 jubilees left, 400 years, 50 years, 50 years. The first 400 years happened correctly. The next one jubilee of 50 years was prophesied correctly. We do know, and most people believe, that these are the last days, the last times, or the Messianic times. 2017. Interesting. Now, one other thing. Actually, a couple other things right quick. One, and I definitely don't want to get a whole lot into this, but you can research these things yourself. Uh, this next one, uh, many of you heard of uh, St. Malachi or done any research on him? Now, this concerns the Roman Catholic uh, religion and the popes and predictions he made concerning popes and they've all all of his predictions of prophecies have been actually true and people say well you've had to bend this to make this true and bend that to make that true and and the studying I've done it falls into line I'm not I don't know a whole whole lot about the um, Catholic religion ever I have been studying this but what he said was St. Francis, who we have now, which in his terminology uh, uh, would be uh, Peter the Roman, and you have to look how St. Francis came to be calling himself St. Francis um, to understand this, but uh, according to St. Malachi, this 113th Pope would be the last one. He would be the one that ushered in the tribulation that would change the Catholic religion and would be standing side by side, I guess, with the Antichrist upon the tribulation. Now, true, not true, depending on how you want to look at it, how much studying you want to do on this, my point is we have all of these biblical, which is all we really have to stand on, all these biblical signs, plus we have St. Malachi, plus we have Rabbi Samuel, and then in this very last thing I want to discuss, again, very briefly, many of you I've sure heard in the past uh, few years, uh, a, a lot of from Pastor John Hagee talking about the four blood moons. And I've done some studying on this, and there's only been three episodes of the four blood moons. Each one concerned something major happening with Israel. Now, here again, God in his infinite wisdom uses our sky as his billboard. So, the first blood moon happened in 1492 with Israel. The second, 1948. The third, 1967. And we've already discussed these episodes of what happened. It was always something important with Israel. Now NASA is the one that researches these blood moons and they're by far the best we have scientific wise to come up with when these episodes will happen. They cannot see ever another episode of Four Blood Moons. Now this fourth one, as many of you might have kept up with, happens over the year 2014 and 2015. The first two have already happened in 2014. We have two left, two phases of the Four Blood Moons, April and September. Okay, so put everything together. Now we have our biblical signs of the last days. We have a very devout rabbi giving prophecies about jubilees and when the end times or when the Jewish people will see the Messiah. We have St. 
Malachi talking about the last pope, and we have God's billboard of the four blood moons. Coincidental? I don't think so. I'm telling you, this is the generation. Look at people today. The atheist group. We now have billboards here in Texas talking about how there is no God. We have people blaspheming God everywhere. There's more and more clubs opening. Drunk driving has increased dramatically. Accidents, taking people's lives over alcohol. The spirituality of each of us as individuals, you can't tell. Do you remember years ago on uh, Christmas, if your dad or mom or whoever forgot batteries for some toy that you might have gotten, you might as well forget about it till the next day. There wasn't even a convenience store open at all. There was no going out to eat on Christmas. Nothing was open. Everything was closed. Today, on Christmas, it's just like any other day. If you live around here, I don't know where you live, maybe things might be a little different. Around here in Texas, everything's open, it's just like another day. Very few things are closed. And why is that? Oh, we can't close, that's a Christian holiday. We wouldn't be being politically correct. We might hurt somebody's feelings if we're closed. Somebody that doesn't believe in God, somebody who isn't a Christian, they may want to do something on Christmas, so we've got to be open. The almighty dollar, the love of money, the root of all evil. Last days. But see, I said earlier in this message that not one thing is preventing Jesus from taking his bride home. That's not quite true. There is one thing. And that's God's grace. His mercy. If he came now, look at all the people that still have not accepted him as their Lord and Savior. And many of you haven't looked at it that way, I'm sure. Yes, we're all excited to go home. But it's not God's choice to leave anyone behind. It's not him that wants anybody to go to hell. It's choice. And the longer he tarries, the more that pastors all around the world, the more that you as an individual can talk to somebody you know that might not be saved. Maybe my message could get across to somebody if just one, one person comes to salvation and accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Every angel in heaven will rejoice. But we don't have a lot of time left. If you're not right with God, it's real simple. All you got to do is believe. There's no need to listen to everything in the world that anybody else says you have to do. You don't have to go to church to get saved. You don't have to walk down the aisle of the church to get saved. You don't have to get baptized to get saved. The Bible simply says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That's all it takes. There is nothing else. Nothing you can do. Your good works aren't going to get you there. Being a good person's not going to get you there. Doing good deeds for everybody's not going to get you there. The only thing that's going to keep you out of hell and get you into heaven is your acceptance as Jesus, as your Lord and Savior. It's not difficult. If you're listening right now and you say, Rick, is that easy? What do I need to do? All you got to do. You don't have to be emotional. You don't have to cry. You don't have to throw your arms up in the air. Just simply bow your head and say, Jesus, Save me. I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe you took my sins away. I know. I believe your word. And I believe that you're honest and true in your word. 
that if I do believe, from this day forth I become a child of yours, and nothing, nothing can snatch me out of your hands. We are in the end of times. These are the last days. Yourself, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your neighbors, are they saved? Are they ready? If Jesus stepped out on that cloud right now and took his church home, are you going? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you that I could come to you today and pass this message along. I pray I've done my best. I've done the will that you've asked me to pass this message along to everyone. Father, I pray if there's somebody out there that needs you, reach in, listen to them, hear them, and we rely on your word. All they need to do is believe. Every person that believes, we give all the glory to you. Take care of us now as we go on through our day. Bless each and every one that is listening. And all these things I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.